We begin tonight with the latest on the arrest of a deaf man with cerebral palsy who was tased by Phoenix police back in August. It's a story that's making national headlines, and the incident is currently under investigation by multiple agencies overseeing police conduct. Fox 10's Nicole Christine joins us live with the next steps in this case. Well, good afternoon, John and Christina. This is a very complicated case. Tyrone McAlpin's lawyer, Jesse Showalter, says when he saw the body cam footage from this arrest, he was shocked. He says he thinks there's a lot more evidence that is going to come out that is now in the city's possession that will shed more light on this incident. But overall, he said what he's worried about right now is getting Tyrone's charges dropped. These officers went wrong from the moment that Officer Harris got out of the car. Hey, buddy, stop where you're at. You, you watch the video. What you see is that his arms are reaching out, uh, and he's assaulting Tyrone from the moment the encounter begins. The number of times that these two officers are striking Tyrone in the head is extreme, and it's outrageous, and it's something that you know, we thought was a thing of the past. According to police documents, the August 19th encounter began after officers reported to Indian School Road and 12th Street for reports of a fight, a claim that later turned out to be unfounded. The officers both reported injuries, leading to felony charges against Tyrone McAlpin of aggravated assault against an officer. Calls to drop those charges now coming in from different organizations and politicians, while Interim Police Chief Michael Sullivan released a statement Wednesday evening, which says in part, quote, the Professional Standard Bureau launched an internal investigation into this incident. Their work is important to ensure all facts are known before drawing any conclusions. I ask for the public's patience during that process. It's very odd to ask for people to be patient when the justice system is not patient with Tyrone and he's facing these serious charges that are wholly unwarranted and should be dropped. Showalter says McAlpin's family is overwhelmed by the situation and that it has altered Tyrone's trust in law enforcement. He has to continue to, to, to live in this community knowing that, um, you know, that he's not safe from police on the streets. Now coming up at 6 o'clock, hear the officer's testimony in court about the encounter as well as the training that they say they've received when it comes to people with disabilities. Reporting live tonight in Phoenix, Nicole Christine, Fox 10 News. Nicole, thanks. A man died in Peoria today after he was trapped in a hole beneath his home. Apparently the 60-year-old man was doing maintenance on a mobile home when he had a medical emergency. Crews pulled him out. He was unresponsive. Investigators are trying to find out more, but there is no sign of trauma. We may be finished with the 100s for the year. Sounds great. Meteorologist Erica Horvatin joins us now with a first look. Yeah, done with the 100s, that's one way to put it. And we also just have much colder morning temperatures on the way, so we're getting ready for our first freeze of the season in some spots. It's really hard to believe we would go from record hot to these cool temperatures back. And I am on the traffic uh, uh, computer over here if we want to get that pulled up. But we do have uh, cooler mornings ahead of us and we'll be seeing those especially up north as we go through the weekend. There we go. So as we take a look to Phoenix, Friday morning, Saturday morning, Sunday morning, look at how those temperatures drop with lows in the 60s to even lows in the 50s Saturday, Sunday, and Monday. And we do have the even colder temperatures in Sholo will be dropping from the mid 40s Friday morning to freezing Saturday morning, Sunday, and Monday. We're even looking at our first hard freeze of the season on Sunday morning, which means that that is a killing freeze, and you'll want to make sure that you bring in any cold-sensitive plants because if they are outside with those temperatures, they could end up perishing. And up further north in Flagstaff, We'll see 38 morning lows on Friday morning, so tomorrow. But Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, so cold. Overnight lows in the 20s, even as low as 21. So pull out those warm coats, the hats, and the gloves because you will be needing them through the weekend, especially if you're heading out late at night or early in the morning. We'll have a look at your full forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, Erica, thank you. The records of Congressman Ruben Gallego and Phoenix Mayor Kate Gallego's divorce have been unsealed. And despite a lot of chatter online about what was contained in this, they offered really few insights into their separation back in 2016 and no bombshells, although there were portions of it 
that were heavily blacked out and redacted. The release stems from a lawsuit filed by a conservative news outlet, the Washington Free Beacon. They argued that these documents should be made public because Ruben Gallego is a public person, a politician running for higher office, the U.S. Senate in this case. The records confirm he was the one who filed for divorce, citing the marriage was irretrievably broken. Both parties agreed that there was no domestic violence or allegations of infidelity. The Gallegos, though, fought to keep the records sealed. There are heavy redactions, as John said, when it comes to personal information about their son and things like finances. Both are running in elections, as you know, right now. In a joint statement, Kate and Ruben Gallego demanded an apology from Republican Senate candidate Ruben Gallego's opponent, Carrie Lake, calling the release shameful, saying, quote, those who amplify her cruelty refuse to respect two people who are just trying to raise a beautiful boy together. Carolina Wren, senior advisor to the Lake campaign, responded to that statement saying Lake had nothing to do with the lawsuit, adding, quote, if Ruben Gallego will turn his back on his pregnant wife days before she gives birth, he will turn his back on Arizona. Tonight on Fox 10 Investigates, we expose recent conditions inside Puppy Love Animal Rescue in Phoenix. Concerns have been raised about the living conditions for dozens of dogs there, so we brought those issues to the Arizona Humane Society and police. Fox 10 Investigator Justin Lum joins us now with a preview of his story tonight that you'll see only here on Fox. John, Christina, for the Arizona Humane Society, this is just an example of what investigators deal with on a daily basis. They rely on complaints from the community, and in our state, there's a real lack of oversight for rescues, breeders, and shelters. Now, we want to warn you, some images we've obtained from an anonymous source are tough to see, but reveal what brought AHS to puppy love in the first place. Here they are. Dogs and puppies are seen in filthy kennels lying in what appears to be their own waste. And that's just some of the images we have tonight. Our source tells us this has been an ongoing issue for months around 50 dogs were housed in the Puppy Love facility as recent as last week. The rescue operation is located just off I-17 near Deer Valley Road. Puppy Love's social media profile says it's a no-kill foster home-based rescue. Our cameras were there last Friday as Arizona Humane Society, along with Phoenix PD, investigated the premises while employees cleaned up the mess. Former employee who just quit in September verified the conditions to us, and we also brought these concerns to AHS Director of Field Operations, Tracy Miller. I have to show you these. I mean, you can just swipe to the left and see. I don't, to compare to what you saw yesterday, I mean, has there been improvement? I mean, they're clearly yes. sitting in their own feces and urine and the water, the food is all affected. Definitely. And that was one of the things that the, the notice was given to. I'm not sure when these photos were taken. Uh, when my investigator was there on Tuesday, we took our own set of photos from when we were on scene that are time and date stamped. Um, and one of the requirements that we gave them was the water bowls. It cannot be on, on the ground. It's literally lining the crate and dogs that are on top of the other dogs will pee and poop on the dogs below them and then that also gets in the water bowls. To be clear, we met with AHS between multiple on-site visits at Puppy Love. Only Phoenix police can cite the rescue for any violations and they have not despite what you saw. Now tonight at 9 we'll show you how this situation unfolded and what challenges Arizona Humane Society is up against across the valley. Plus you'll meet the rescue's owners in our report. I'm Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum.